Any guesses on how many kicks? Put them in the comments. I think it's gonna fire on the first kick after three primes. So we're gonna prime it till we got some fuel in the carburetor. One, two, three. Anything in there yet? Let's... Yep, we got fuel now. Got fuel now? Yep. It's gonna fire right up. You watch this. Oh. Oh. Hey guys, Matt here from Wheels Through Time. I just drove 4,000 miles for what's in this motorcycle trailer. You guys are absolutely not gonna believe it. Now, here at the museum, 375 all-American made motorcycles, and as you guys know, big, big, big focus on originality. What is inside of this trailer rivals anything inside of the museum as far as original condition goes. Guys, 4,000 miles, and for darn good reason. Absolutely unbelievable, guys. Can you guys believe this is original paint? 1950 Harley Davidson model FL pan head in beautiful Riviera blue. We're gonna get this thing over on the side stand and inspect it. It looks first glance to be in amazing original condition. It just, guys, antique motorcycles, originality is absolutely where it's at. First factory paint. This is what we call Riviera Blue. And, uh, ah, so cool when they're like this, guys. You know, bikes of this era changed, modified, repainted, torn down, turned into choppers, turned into just about anything except for what they actually were. This bike, incredibly well preserved. My heart's beating fast. I don't know if it's from pushing it or if it's for how cool the bike actually is. Now, 1950, rare year, guys. They actually made less 1950s than they did 1947, 48, 49s. Uh, this is a model FL, 40, or a 74 cubic inch, excuse me, four-speed transmission. Over on the other side, it's still got the four-speed tank shift set up. Did tank shift all the way through 1952. So in 52, they offered the, the hand clutch and foot shift as a primary setup and actually did a, a tank shift option. Uh, this bike, one of the last years for just the tank shift setup. God, this blue is incredible. It's a little dusty, probably from riding in the trailer. Chrome's in incredible condition. Double spotlights up front, everything. You know, horn button feels like it. Man, high low beam, spark advance. I do not know when the last time this bike ran Spent 2,000 miles on the way back just visualizing getting this thing running, guys. And what we're going to do, we're going to kind of roll this thing onto the lift and kind of diagnose some of the issues right there at a glance and kind of tell you guys exactly, you know, what's right, what's wrong, what's been changed over the years, what's not original. Uh, and maybe we can even dig into some of the wheels through time stash and put on a few of the original pieces or a few original pieces that would have come on uh, a bike like this. Uh, so we're going to get to work. Chris is going to help me out. And hopefully, uh, after bolting on some more original pieces, uh, we're going to be able to fire this thing up for you guys. So stay tuned. It's going to be a lot of fun. Alright. What a motorcycle. 1950. So... My dad actually had a beautiful 1950, the same color as this. Yeah. It was not this nice. It's a beautiful color, man. It's like the, the age of it just, you know, it's, it's hard to explain how beautiful it looks in person to not just see it on the, on the screen, but like it just has a... For it to be that old, yeah. you know? And the thing is, is with a little bit of rubbing, this thing would absolutely oh, yeah. glow. Pop out again. You know how we like them here is dirty and grimy yep. and this is one of those bikes that almost deserves to be polished up and yep. you know the chrome is nice. This yeah. thing is decked out head to toe. Spotlights, fender light, extra bumper, this is what we call a cheese grater or a cabbage cutter, that's extra. Beautiful fender trim, look at that big moon hubcap up front. Harley stuff guys, that's genuine Harley Davidson. Uh, oil filter. 
On the back, you've got some of the trim here that acts as the luggage rack, buddy seat springs, uh, extra bullet lights, extra cheese grater, uh, cabbage cutter in the back, rear fender trim. What do you got under here? You got a, a battery lid cover. Um, God, man, it's so nice. Look at these original Harley Davidson Eaton gas caps. These things are so rare. And to find them today, these don't have a ding or a dent in them. Um, original gas caps, guys. So the bike reads 54,000 miles. It's a lot of miles for a panhead. For something like that to be original, mm -hmm. with 54,000 miles and still be in as good a shape yeah. as this is, unbelievable. Original grips, um, some extra here, uh, cable cover type of stuff. Original steering dampener, look at that. It's got the original black knob on it, nice and tight. Um, now we're missing a couple bolts over here, so it looks like the bike had a windshield. There's a pile of stuff in the trainer, Chris. Yeah. Let's go grab it. Extras to this bike, guys. So some of the stuff that's on there, incorrect. The guy said he saved a lot of it. So we're gonna get in the trailer over here. Um, yeah, look at this, boom. 1952 saddlebags, red piping. This one needs a little love. First thing when I saw the photos, uh, the thing's got drag pipes on it, and the guy that rode it must have liked that loud sound. Those drag pipes are coming right off. He said he had original, original muffler stuff in here. Uh, didn't used to be white, so this here would have been chrome. So he's looks like he's ceramic coat painted that or something like that. Maybe we've got something inside the museum. Original Harley Davidson toolbox with the hardware. Check that beautiful piece out. Wow, that's like a handlebar reinforcement brace. Wow, accessory bullet life. I bet these these were under the seat. Oh, yeah. I can almost guarantee it. So here is some of that original Harley Davidson exhaust stuff. Now, I think he said he got this re-chromed. This one here doesn't look re-chromed, but the slinkies are definitely re-chromed. And I may have a set of these that match the bike better yeah. and aren't so shiny. Aren't so shiny. Yeah, yeah. The, but the, the rare aged, stuff nonetheless, the man. Aged chrome look yeah, the, the aged chrome. chrome. You see, yeah. the thing about this is the drag pipes, those are two one-piece pipes. So they remove the header pipes, the squish pipe, the Y pipe, the muffler. Um, that's another one. That may be aftermarket. So that's the aftermarket header pipe. Y pipe. Ah, oh, it's like Christmas, digging through old parts of, or old boxes of motorcycles. See, that's the squish pipe, but that's a new one. And there's a, there's another one? one? Yeah. You see, boom, there it is. Okay, yeah. original, uh, reproduction, riveted, top and bottom, two rivets on the top and the bottom. These are just welded, so uh, this is absolutely gonna get used. All right, last stuff out of the trailer, guys. Um, some cable covers. Look at there, new brake pads. Those are brand new. I'm gonna use those on my knucklehead. Good stuff, all right. So yeah, some bulbs, battery tubes, this stuff here, old beat up windshield. I remember the fellow telling me he was riding down the road and the top of the windshield just fell off. Um, this is so awesome. Looks like a 1949-ish muffler. I can't tell if this is original or aftermarket. This is ultra cool. This isn't even a 1950 part. This is late 48, 1949 exhaust cover. So what this did was this hung right over it, Chris, yeah. right? Made out of stainless um, and actually hung right back here and dressed it up. So 1950, they didn't even use these. So whoever owned this bike first must have just thought it was a they cool like, part. They like the look, yeah. Yeah, maybe he had a 49 or a, a late 48 or something and held on to this thing. Um, I think we might end up putting it back on. It really depends how the rest of the bike looks, but yeah. it's awesome part. Ultra rare today, guys. If you find one of these, call me. Um, <laughs> way rare, 1949 uh, stainless muffler covers. But guys, I think this thing's gonna be fairly straightforward to get going. Uh, standard carburetor job i can smell the old stale yeah. gas so uh we may have to clean the gas tank out uh of course we'll check the oil check the trans oil um yeah do the float bowl battery so what we're gonna do is uh we'll get this thing 
lift it off the ground, Chris. And you and me, first thing we do is like, you can start pulling the rear pipe off. I'll start pulling the front pipe off. Uh, and we'll see if we can dress up some original exhaust on there and hit the rest of it okay, uh, afterwards. Cool. Now, Chris is taking the exhaust pipes off. We're going to root around in the exhaust pile and see what we can find here for extra stuff. Boom, right on top. It's like it was waiting for us. Original pan head pipe, OEM pipe with a slinky on it. The slinky's a little bit... A little more proper now these I've been saving these I'm not sure if I want to use those or not but I've been saving these for a good uh, project we'll pull them out and we'll at least look at them and then uh, rear header pipe rear header pipe this is a rear header pipe okay so there's an OEM rear header pipe it's not quite chrome but it's kind of the same finish as the top. So uh, with a slinky over the top of it, nobody will know the difference. Uh, guys, the thing about this is plenty of reproduction stuff available. You could go get some nice shiny new chrome stuff. And in fact, we've got some like, I don't know if it's Superior or some other aftermarket company header pipes over there. They're all fresh chrome. Bike like this, originality at all costs. Uh, this happens to be exactly the pipe that we need. This is, see, the Y pipe has a little kick up. Um, yeah, this is almost like exactly what we need. Now it's rough shape. It's kind of rusty. There's no holes in it. It's got the clamp on. So that's an option. Okay. Proper muffler. That's the right type of muffler. Same thing here. Um, that's a little nicer muffler, so maybe we go ahead and use maybe we use that one, and then here's another one. Had this stack sitting for a while. This actually may be the ticket. So what we'll do is we'll we'll start cleaning this one up, and maybe we'll mix and match and uh, make one out of three. So all right, so mufflers, header pipes. I'll be back for the slinkies. Oh, there's something in there. Oh, nice. Not too yeah, bad. that's clean. Beautiful. Okay. Toolbox. Man, this thing is beautiful. Not scratch the paint. That one's in. Pardon the use of the crescent wrench, guys, or the adjustable. Occasionally, you use your all 16s. So, cool thing. Check this out. With this bike came the original set of keys that the fella had. Yeah, check this you out. You don't so see that very often. You don't see it often. And this was his keychain. He's got a quarter and a dime uh, with holes in them. Briggs and Stratton keys. Uh, there's your Harley Davidson no toolbox key. That's an original toolbox key. We're closed and open. Works like new. Just awesome really cool so this was the one we were and that one's actually not terrible that's the original pipe too um, which one do we like better this one's a little nicer chrome and gosh dude I don't know what to do about this slinky because I don't want to cut an NOS slinky but NOS slinkies would look really good on there ah choices See, these guys here have never even been used. I think I got another set. Same thing. Yeah, I'm not using those. These are in, these are in the box, guys. So we're going to... Uh, I guess we're going to use these. So what we got to do is we're going to have to cut this one. Oh, this is the worst part about cutting NOS stuff. Using the NOS ones. So I've actually got to shorten this. This is what we're looking like. Um, okay. Here we go. All right, let's put a finish on these on the belt sander. Yes. Yes. All right. Okay. There we are. Man, that's pretty slick. Looks good. It's pretty slick. 
this side we're going to slide in. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, that's cool, dude. Yeah, it looks really, really, cool. really cool on a 50 of all things. There we go. All right. M45A, that's a 1950. I think that's a 50 carburetor. Wow. All right, so float bowl off. This will reveal a lot. The fact the spring's not all ate up is good. Um, let's see what's in this float bowl here. A shriveled up cork, but it doesn't look terrible. We're gonna end up taking this sucker apart. So we're gonna drop in a uh, six volt battery. You know, these are all six volt systems uh, as they were back in the 50s. Uh, we don't typically ever change anything over to a 12 volt system. We'd like to leave it six volt the way it was. Again, all about originality. Um, pulled this one out of a bike uh, in the museum that we've been running currently, but are kind of taken off rotation. And, um, you know, order just to keep track of things. We don't leave batteries uh, in bikes after we stop running them, just so they don't uh, corrode and things like that. So we can move them around from bike to bike. So we'll hook this one up. Uh, then we can start checking the wiring, make sure everything looks okay. And if we have any issues, we can chase that down before we start trying to start it up. This is crazy. This was, you know, all the passages were open and everything looked like it would function just fine, but this is what's coming out of that carburetor and, you know, just had, you know, like kind of greasy, nasty grime just caked to the inside of the throat. What we see is a lot of original brass now inside and get this thing cleaned out. We'll go over to the belt sander and shave down that bat gasket surface, make sure it's nice and flat, and uh, back together she goes. Okay, we've got a done carburetor. Yeah. Do you want to run in and get that seat? Okay. With the one with the cool rail on it? Yes. Uh, cool. So earlier we looked through some of the stuff we have inside the museum and found a seat we really wanted to use for this bike. So one of the great things about having this collection is we've got lots of stuff to pull from and we can always really no matter what year stuff we're working on we have something we can pull from. Let's see we talked about two different ones. Is this one? Ah this is the one here. Really really cool seat. Like Matt said vinyl so a little later year but this really cool rail on the back. Uh, that somebody made for this is going to match that bike perfectly with everything else that's on it. Oh God, does that thing have the look or what? I know. It's perfect. All right. Yeah, look at that double rail. Man, that is cool. I love it. It's going to look real good on this. Climb up and we'll see where it likes it. Oh yeah, man, that looks good. How's it look for you guys? This thing is... Oh, it's going to be perfect. Now what we got to do, Chris, is pinch that down just a little bit. So I've got just the tool for that. Uh, okay. Awesome, guys. Now this is not your baseline model. Uh, the FL 74 cubic inch high compression. They made 61s and 74s. They made them in high compression. They made them in standard compression. Uh, so right off the bat, it's got the, the big motor for the day. Uh, this thing is absolutely decked out and uh, one of the last accessories right here before we pull this seat on. We're set to go, man. So what do we got? One down here. I showed Haley a picture of this thing and my wife is ready to ride on this bike. <laughs> she loves old motorcycles. She's kind of from an Indian family and uh, Anytime we get a real fancy Harley, we always like to jump on and run by her pop's place and show them which side the throttle's on. All right. That seat looks good from here. This wing nut does not want to... Doesn't want to thread? Doesn't want to thread. You got to ask it nicely. Let's pull this thing down, Chris, and add some gas. Okay. Yep. Yeah, 
load it up. Yep, I think we're ready to go. Let's do it. <sighs> Moment of truth, guys. The funnest part. 1950 Harley Davidson panhead. Now this thing's plenty high compression. We're gonna retard the spark a little bit. Any guesses on how many kicks? Put them in the comments. I think it's gonna fire on the first kick after three primes. So we're gonna prime it till we got some fuel in the carburetor. One, two, three. Anything in there yet? Let's... Yeah, we got fuel now. Got fuel now? Yep. It's gonna fire right up. You watch this. Oh. Oh. Yep. Maybe not. Come on. Oh, it wants it. I can feel it. Watch out. Oh, it wants it. Come on. Let me give it a couple more prime kicks. Man, I can hear it puking oil down on the bottom too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of oil in the lower end. Ready? Here it is. So we're rolling all the way off, but the throttle's not rolling all the way off. So let's, uh, not bad. A couple more kicks than I planned. Yeah. But it sounds pretty good. You can hear those lifters too. Hydraulic lifters. And they're, they take a second to pump up. Hand me that, uh, get a shine me underneath there. And we're going to figure out what it's going to take to get this guy to return properly. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Okay, let's try it again. Ready? Another kick. That's more like it. Wow.
Ranger glide. It's like, who needs the Springer fork when you got the glide front end? We used to ride knuckleheads, man. This thing's like a Cadillac compared to a knucklehead. Unbelievable. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Another one back to life right here at Wheels Through Time. Chris, thanks a ton for the elbow greets. And awesome, man. Just such a thrill to get a bike like this running. Completely original 1950. Runs, rides, drives like new. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Make sure you check out wheelsthroughtime.com. Support the museum today. Get some tickets on our raffle. Come to the museum and check this place out. 375 All-American motorcycles. And of course, everything runs. I'm going for a ride. Till next time.